Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's session on uh, prophetic ministry. Let's pray and begin. I would like to request uh, one of us on the call to please lead in prayer. Kindly unmute and uh, pray aloud. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. God, I give all my classmates into your hands. Uh, be with us and guide us as best the means of you, Jesus. I help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it. And not just listen to it, but let us be the doer of the word, Lord. Every verse that we hear, let it shine through our life. Let it shine through our actions. And let it shine through our words so that we can be a blessing to others, Lord. Be with us and guide us, give us good, good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session, and let everything that we do be done for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. Um, so we've been talking about activating the gift of prophecy, and there are some key principles that we need to settle in our hearts before we flow in this gift. And that's what we were talking about. We talked about the fact that all can prophesy um, uh, similar to the other gifts of the Holy Spirit. God releases all of them. But we saw how there is something relevant for a moment or a given circumstance and uh, that is when you know we say that okay this particular gift uh, is is operational now and some other gift but here is the reality the holy spirit he is given to all of us he comes with all the gifts and all of us can manifest all the nine gifts of the spirit and which is why prophecy is also something that each one of us can flow in and we saw some uh, essential things such as releasing uh, the prophetic word in faith because without faith we will not see the stirring up and the operation of the gifts of the spirit so the opposite of this is when i have unbelief in my heart or let's say i have no faith in my heart what happens i cannot move in the gifts of the spirit so how do we develop faith? We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's when we input the word and let it work in our hearts that faith will be generated. So even as we study about prophetic ministry and the gift of prophecy, one thing which is taking place right now is faith is being built up. So that also is an encouragement for us to know that you and I will be able to flow better in the prophetic gift. So uh, we must spend time in the word of God. Now, moving on, spiritual gifts. Okay, Spiritual gifts, they are from the Lord. Uh, it's a gift from God. You know, we cannot uh, sort of make them happen on our own. That's a reality. But we also said that these gifts can be imparted. okay, uh, And these gifts can be activated. So there is the origin of the gifts, which is from God. But in our human pursuit, we can uh, have the gifts activated and imparted to us. Okay. So uh, that is something that uh, we recognize and which is why training, developing, nurturing, the gift is relevant. It's not unbiblical. Uh, and of course, we can make our gift stronger and uh, cause it to be more effective uh, or even you know take it to a level where it's very accurate and perfect as well. So uh, this also helps us to work with the gift better. So now I'm going um, to some of the other key things that I had shared. We said that prophecy is in part. Uh, nobody can read up another person completely because we are limited. We are human beings and we know that it's only God who is omniscient or God is all-knowing. Now that God is all-knowing, he chooses to reveal 
a portion of what he thinks is important. So even when we pray for someone, the revelation which we receive could be in line with what we have prayed or it could be something completely different. For example, somebody could come up to me and say, Pastor, can you please pray for my career? But as I'm praying for their career, maybe I don't receive any, any uh, revelation from God about their career. Instead, I receive a revelation from God regarding their ministry. And so that might surprise the person who's praying and the person who's receiving um, because we were asking for something absolutely different. But we have to go with what God is choosing to reveal. Okay, uh, and that's how it works. So it's not it 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 is about what God wants to reveal in those moments, and that is something we must understand. So we shouldn't get shocked and say, "What is this? Uh, I wanted to know something else, but God is just not talking uh, about uh, you know a certain matter." Let's say someone's praying for their marriage. And they're asking God, okay, God, show me, reveal to me, what would you, uh, which way are you leading me? And maybe they don't receive any inputs in that matter. And uh, God may want them to learn from the wisdom of his word alone. We don't know. So it depends. It really depends on what it is that God thinks is important uh, to reveal to us. Then we talked about the fact that all prophecy must be judged because prophecy is pure. The gift is pure, but the human vessel okay, that releases the gift can sometimes uh, make mi mistakes, errors, uh, because you know we, we have our own biases, ideas, and thoughts, and that can rub off on the prophetic word that comes. So we must be careful about that so we must let other people also uh, evaluate and assess the prophetic word which is being spoken we'll uh, talk more about it later when we are talking about interpreting personal prophecy uh, now moving ahead we are saying that uh, when a message is given the way we deliver the message is in our own control so sometimes there is this thought that when the holy spirit you know, he will uh, force us to release the gifts the way he wants. So, you know, there are all these uh, um, uh, mindsets in Christian circles where you know, physically they, they don't have any control or they're shaking and this and that. Well, it could happen uh, initially when we are sensing the power of God. But then, you know... Um, it's not like the Holy Spirit will override our will or our control. Uh, so scriptures do tell us, 1 Corinthians 14 verses 32 and 33, the essence there is the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Simply to say that God gives us the control on how we want to deliver a certain message. And prophecy can flow with other gifts. We've already talked about the gift packs. Uh, we may actually be expecting uh, just the prophetic word to be released, but we notice that the person needs healing. And so the gifts of healings can flow in those moments. Or uh, the person may really need a miracle and the gifts of healings, uh, gifts of miracle might be operational so it really depends on how god wants to work and we should not um, uh, try to compartmentalize the gifts and think that okay this is how it is supposed to be and you know diagnose it and say oh, okay this is this gift that is that gift as long as the person is getting blessed you know we are also happy with that uh, and i shared how it's important for us to give the listener an opportunity to assess the prophetic word uh, by which we are saying uh, they should be able to trust god for a confirmation uh, or go to somebody else to uh, make sure that what they are hearing from us is really from God. And so when we are giving them an opportunity to, to assess the prophetic word, if we 
avoid the terms thus says the lord it will be very helpful um, especially for younger believers so that you know they know that there is the freedom to actually get a confirmation for this prophecy i don't have to act on it now moving to the next section here preparation for releasing the prophecy so the most important question that we ask in anything that we do particularly in ministry is why why am i doing what i am doing so whenever we are able to answer that why with an appropriate uh, you know a, a, appropriate let's say intention or motivation then it makes all that we are doing worthwhile okay so here we ask the question why why am i learning about uh, prophecy why am i learning about spiritual gifts why should i get better at spiritual gifts okay so the answer to that question is in first corinthians 14 and verse 12 uh, paul wrote to the believers he said you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel so there it is what is he saying zealous for the spiritual gifts is yes we are excited we are interested we want to grow in the practice of the spiritual gifts but the reason why we want to do it is so that we can edify the church edify is build up so edify the church would simply mean build up the people because who makes up the church people make up the church so we want to build them up spiritually we want to build them up uh, in you know with regard to different things that may concern them uh, and which is why we are saying that we need to grow in the prophetic gift so when our motive is pure that the intention is let god's people be blessed with these gifts let me be more accurate so that you know when i when i say a word see for example you know i've heard uh, uh, prophecies in which people have even given out phone numbers okay i remember once in our weekend school one of the pastors who was ministering uh, he flows very very uh, uh, smoothly in in the prophetic gift and uh, he said something like i know that there are and he gave the exact number so many people whose birthdays are on the 1st of january he just said that okay and then one person put up their hand uh, and then another person put up their hand like basically it's a group and what what are the chances that he knows and he was not related to you know any of us who knew our birthdays but he actually said that and it was correct you know there were those many people whose birthdays were on that day i've heard uh, people who even uh, can say phone numbers and i've uh, personally not heard but i have uh, i have seen testimonies where uh, it is said that even bank account numbers right uh, there are prophets who who are so accurate right so apparently there's one particular prophet to get the attention of a very rich businessman when he went to minister to that businessman he started saying a number and he did not know what that number was he just started saying does this number make sense to you and then he started saying some some particular number and uh, the businessman said hey hey stop uh because that is my swiss account number you know so it's like uh, god knows how to get people's attention so the level of accuracy that we have in the prophetic can be uh, incredible but you see even things like this somewhere we can become very proud we can we can feel that um, okay if i do all these things then people will say oh so and so look at pastor nancy she is so good at prophesying so the thing is we can do the right thing but we can have the wrong motivation and that is the most critical thing where our motivation is right before the lord because god can keep taking us to greater heights but when our hearts are settled in the right place and we are thinking hey 
this is nothing to do uh, you know to validate myself uh, but it's more for the benefit of the listener that person is being blessed that person is being made aware of the presence of god the reality of god and how god loves them so god for that sake please help me to be strong in the prophetic gift or any other gift that is the right motivation so we must make sure that we are zealous for the gifts but our intention is the edification of the church okay moving along the next important thing here when we minister one thing that we must do while releasing a prophecy and this is important for all forms of ministry keep our spirit separate from personal experiences so what do we mean by that uh, we might have a um, let's say a positive experience and uh, we would have seen a certain gift function in a certain way for example uh, I'm, when i'm prophesying for somebody um, i i may notice that if i lay hands on them then it flows better right some small little things happen uh, and you notice it and then you're like okay fine every time i'll do that but here's the point you know we cannot box god up even if it was a positive experience last time uh, maybe god wants to do it in a different way maybe he just wants you to call out something or uh, write uh, write out a note and tell the person that this is what god is saying so god is very creative and uh, whether it is a positive experience of the past or let's say a negative experience negative experience may mean um, you know suppose there is an example of a bad marriage and in that marriage the both the husband and wife they don't get along and there's a lot of hurt there's a lot of accusation everything now if they don't receive healing from god for these matters uh, uh, what happens when they are ministering not just in prophecies but uh, even sharing the word or encouraging someone somewhere those biases there is a risk of those biases showing up where you know the lady might say oh don't trust men they are like that or the man might say don't trust women because they are like this but where is that coming from it's coming from a negative uh, uh, experience that the individual has had okay and they have not found healing for it and so these things are dangerous because our personal experience can sometimes bring a bias uh, or it can hinder the true flow of the spirit because uh, what's happening again the gift is pure the flow of the holy spirit is very real but it is marred by negative emotions or hurts that one is experiencing or let's say uh, an experience which uh, is maybe you may want to call it neutral like uh, as a minister of god who has left their career maybe they were at the peak of their career and then they decided to quit their job to serve the lord now just because they did it and they are not separating their personal experience right while ministering to another person uh if one is not careful they might give the same advice to everybody but then that's not how god works maybe quitting their job was their call but for someone else that they are ministering to god may be asking them to continue in their job and still serve him so this is how personal experiences sometimes interfere so this is uh, like i usually do this when i'm praying for someone i just take time to pray in the spirit a little bit you know if if there's an opportunity to do that i just pray in the spirit stir myself up and then i i just say lord you know uh, let me not think of anything you know, i try to calm my mind and then as the lord gives pictures words you know something fresh that is coming into my mind i i see we'll see later on that generally the first things that appear right the first things that we pick up are from the lord and then we have to see how to deliver it in the right way 
Okay, so uh, these are all some things that you and I can practice while releasing the gift of prophecy. Or the best thing that happens is um, when you're not even thinking about it, you get a word from God. Um, so I remember this happened. This was uh, somewhere during uh, COVID when COVID was, you know, ending and church services had started. So all our pastors would go and minister on the on the stage. So one particular Sunday, it was a common service. Our uh, congregation had not yet started. So I'd gone to Central Church. And uh, this was not even when I went on the stage and we started praying, right, for, for prophetic words. Somewhere in the middle of the service, I got a prompting. Okay, somebody's right hand, right elbow. I don't remember exactly. Something like that. Uh, right elbow, God is healing it. And then uh, skin uh, allergies, God is healing. Then I just shared that word. And I was not even thinking that I should get a prophetic word. But as I was worshipping, listening to the sermon, it just came. But then I knew the moment the my mind went to these thoughts, I was like, hey, that's the prophetic word. I have to release these. So I called out those healings. The very next week, I think, um, there were testimonies that came. And in fact, one lady had made a video uh, uh, about how she she earlier, she was not able to move her hand, but uh, you know now she was able to move her hand. Uh, and also another person from another country had written and said, uh, like I had for many months, I had these skin allergies, but the moment that word was called up, it started healing. Okay, so uh, I was amazed. Frankly, everyone I think who gives the word will be amazed themselves because we are not the source. God is the source and he is giving us these words. Okay, so uh, when we pick it up and try to separate our thinking from this, that is the best way to minister. And uh, as I shared, calm yourself down, come to a place of stillness, and then you know, you'll be in a better position to receive. Or even nicer is when you're not thinking about a matter and God gives you a word, because you're not biased when those uh, incidents happen. OK, let's go on. So there's uh, quite a bit to talk about here. Uh, separate your spirit from personal prejudices. Prejudices is, again, it's a bias where, uh, you know, we might have our own mindset. Like, uh, let's say we think that people who wear a certain kind of outfit uh, are holy. Others are not, you know. Uh, or uh, people who have a certain way of grooming. Let's say a young person comes to us with a mohawk and a lot of, you know, earrings, piercings and everything. We might look at him and think in our hearts, be very judgmental and think, oh, what a sinner. You know, somewhere we have our own way of assessing people and uh, judging them and saying this one's holy, that one's not holy. But that is our own personal prejudice. Uh, so we have to get rid of that. Now, God may... We may not know the person with all the piercings and weird looking hairstyle and everything. For all you know, that person's walk with the Lord might be much more purer than the so-called person who's wearing, you know, like a white, white and white. So uh, this is how we think. And uh, if we are not careful, we will give preference to the, the people we think are holy or we think are important or think about this. You know, some leaders come to the church, uh, political leaders come, or uh, you may have some celebrities coming to the church, or even a, a rich person comes to the church. And you have some, uh, you know, people you know, they are not well to do. When we are prophesying, we could have this tendency where uh, we want to give a long prophetic word to the rich person or the political leader and not the poor person. But what does the Bible say? It says, don't show partiality. So these are all personal prejudices uh, that one must uh, be careful about. Now, even this happens sometimes as individuals. You know, we carry a very um, critical 
or a judgmental spirit if we don't deal with that okay uh, every prophecy that we release will be condemning for others uh, like you know uh, yes god is using you today but uh, you know he's warning you if you're not uh, careful then he's going to bring you down so much calamity will come on you this and that but you see sometimes some folks repeatedly it's only warnings judgments uh, punishment calamity so that is somewhere indicative of a critical spirit that one is working with that critical spirit and so every prophecy is like that uh, or you know uh, sometimes people are perfectionists and they expect perfection from themselves and therefore they expect perfection from everyone else and so again we are very uh, critical of others uh, so we have to see as to how our spirit is if it is not in a place that it has received healing from god we too can be uh, releasing judgmental prophecies or uh, be very self righteous isn't it where we put others down we hold others to very high standards whereas our own lives are not Uh, you know uh, proper before the lord so these are things to be careful about now other other things to uh, note when we are prophesying mm. i told us that not always does god reveal so there can be times when we pray and we don't hear anything now that doesn't mean something is wrong with the person or something is wrong with us it doesn't mean that it may simply mean that god wants to speak another time okay uh, and so what do you do imagine you know somebody has called you to minister and they think wow so and so you are flowing beautifully in the prophetic gift please come you go there and they say okay give us a word and you pray for them there is no word it can be so embarrassing because you're like oh what will they think of me but here's what the word of god says so there is a, a scripture portion here could somebody please read it jeremiah 23 verses 16 and 28 it's in the notes pdf is uh, uh, page number 126 but maybe your number is different Jeremiah twenty three sixteen and twenty eight. Jeremiah chapter twenty three verse sixteen. This is what the Lord Almighty says: Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Verse twenty eight. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with the grain? Declares the Lord. Okay, thank you, Jafina. So as we can see here, uh, it's saying that when we say something which is not from God, what did God tell His people? don't listen to those words of words of the prophets because they make you worthless they speak a vision which is their own from their own heart and not from the mouth of the lord so we have to be very careful when we prophesy it has got we have to test our own hearts and see okay is it from god or is it from me so when i am convinced that this is from god that's when i release it okay now if i don't hear anything from god see the next verse there was 28 the prophet who has a dream let him tell a dream and he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat says the lord so If there's a prophetic word, release it. If there's no prophetic word, we have the written word of God. We have the instruction of God's word. Maybe we can just pray a blessing on the people and stop with that. 
that should be fine so the test is not only to accurately prophesy the test is to be right in the at the source so if i'm not receiving anything from god actually the bigger test is keeping silent can we be silent or do we feel the pressure you know sometimes we feel pressure isn't it uh, that people are expecting i have to give a good word or uh, what will they think you know what will they think about me like this sunday i remember this sunday it happened uh, generally at the ministry time we call out words isn't it so as the lord puts the lord is healing uh, people of back pain the lord is healing this and that so i prayed and uh, really i didn't get anything and i thought oh goodness what am i going to do because towards the wrapping up of the service i i i didn't know what to call out so all i did was i just prayed a blessing on the people i just said okay you know this is uh, what the lord uh, uh, this is what the cross has done and you are blessed and this and that i just prayed the word that's fine you know what what if people think that oh look at this pastor not spiritual enough well it shouldn't bother us because we have to be faithful if i heard from god let me say it if i did not hear from god let me not manufacture anything okay so that is the test what is the problem if we manufacture something one is we are not honoring god we are being disobedient it is obviously sin because we are lying it's not it's not from god second is you see what that passage said these people who prophesy things from their own heart they make you worthless so we are hurting people that is the danger we have to be careful okay now moving ahead uh, it says when it comes to prophesying build and maintain godly character so when we look at uh, the word of god the word says that new wine can be poured in new wine skin because if new wine is poured in old wine skin it will burst so what is god saying he is saying that god is ready to pour out his spirit but for us to contain the work of god for us to release the work of god we need the wine skin called as character if character is strong okay if character is filled with faith established in god um uh, grounded in integrity then what happens then we are able to uh, serve god appropriately but if the character is not fit okay then what happens there are all these tendencies to manipulate and that's very very dangerous in fact you know paul when he talks to the corinthian church something so beautiful you know we see a church which is flowing in the gifts of the spirit so what is our uh, conclusion this church is a spiritual church it must be a mature church because god is giving them all the gifts of the spirit but that's not true because paul writes to the same corinthians and says you know uh, he rebukes them he says you are carnal and he tells them stop behaving like ordinary men so here is this contrast you have the flow of the gifts but you have carnal believers okay and that's a bad combination what does god want he wants the gifts to be operational but he is calling the believers to maturity so that would be the best combination now god does not withhold the gifts because we are still uh, you know very young in the lord we are still growing in god god is very gracious that way he lavishes his gifts on all his children but then the responsibility will fall on us and uh, as much as we work on the effectiveness and the accuracy of the gift we must also work on the character so when uh, i 
become grounded in the faith and develop you know perseverance integrity strong identity what happens i'm able to flow in the gifts better uh, and uh, it will be a blessing to the people now the next thing here i'm uh, just moving on with whatever is there in our uh, notes but if you have a question then you can always stop me okay just uh, unmute and ask so here's the next thing uh, it says do not base your identity in spiritual gifts now even in the course code of honor we would have studied this that our identity is not our ministry we are more than our ministry okay we are children of god we are loved by god now you know we we are blessed so many so many things that we learn of who we have become in christ jesus that should be the most important thing but when we make our identity spiritual gifts okay and uh, we want people to know that uh, oh look at this brother is very good with prophecy or look at this brother um, he flows in healing and if people don't recognize us for that we get hurt we say oh come on they're not giving me the respect or they're not valuing me for the gifts that god has put on my life or for the anointing that god has you know there are there are people who who uh, completely base their identity on the ministry or the flow of spiritual gifts but that is actually a sign of insecurity and misplaced identity now we will see later there is something known as prophetic teams so when we work with others there will be times when let's say we are very good at uh, hearing from god and flowing in the gifts but when we are working in a team we may have to give the next person the chance to prophesy or we may have to give the microphone to another person and here's what could happen the microphone may never come back to you but are you okay with that or does it make you feel small that oh i uh, people couldn't see me prophesying you know so this is all for for us we may think oh uh, wise pastor using an example like that but this this is the reality because within us we go through these questions and struggles but when we are grounded in christ you remember the time when jesus commissioned people he said go uh, cast out uh, you know devils uh, in luke 10 like they go um, i give you the authority to trample on uh, serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall hurt you they come back and they tell jesus we saw satan fall like lightning so what were they saying they were saying we saw the downfall of satan you know we saw the defeat of satan it was spectacular uh, but then jesus says something like uh, don't rejoice and that you know uh, you saw all these things but rejoice that your name is written okay uh, in in the book of life so was jesus saying that ministry is not important gifts of the spirit are not important no no let's not interpret it like that because we know other portions of scripture give a lot of importance for ministry and gifts of the spirit but he's making a deeper point and that point is about security identity where he's saying beyond all the things that you can do rejoice that you are my children you are with me so that's how we uh, flow better in the gifts of the spirit okay and know what the word of god says so when we know the word of god uh when it comes to interpreting of prophecy we will be very very uh, accurate now take for example if uh, there is a prophetic word i remember i've heard somebody say this also this was uh, uh, when you know i was in my professional uh, uh, like my career and uh, i had uh, a, a certain friend she was from another country and in their country i think it was culturally okay to uh, leave marriages and you know you can just move on to the next person something like that so uh, i was talking to her and she said uh, that uh, another good friend of mine that god gave her a word 
that the person that she was with right now that that's not the right person and that she has to go with somebody else okay and she was already married okay so when i heard this i was so shocked i said how can you even say that how can that even be a prophecy because the bible talks about the covenant of marriage so if you don't understand the bible then in the name of prophecy people talk many things and it messes up lives of of uh, you know men and women uh, so i was immediately alerted because it's going against a fundamental principle you know a fundamental covenant in the word of god when somebody is already married how can god give a word that okay you know i want you to be with somebody else so this is why knowing the word is so critical the foundation of god's word has to be very very strong for the accurate uh, practice of the release of the gift of prophecy uh, and another important thing is uh, when we prophesy you know we will see that god speaks through visions pictures symbols parables now when we get those symbols we may not know what it means for example if i see a tree and i see a river and i see the tree is so uh, you know green and has fruits i can immediately connect it someone oh yeah it talks about the tree planted by the rivers of water who bears fruit in its season whose leaves will not wither whatever that person does will prosper so god is talking about a godly person who prospers you see i am able to interpret because the word is in me but if the word is not in me then even when it comes to identifying you know those symbols or interpretation i'm not able to interpret it according to the word of god so it's very very important for us to be established in the doctrine of god's word uh, and to also know uh, you know uh, how to interpret we will study later it's it's kind of a self policing so i'll get the word and then we'll see how the word comes in like the you know in in into my senses and then in my mind in my renewed mind i have to go through this process of reasoning analyzing interpreting and then i pull out okay this is what god is saying and then i choose to release it so that's the whole process of prophecy it's not just okay i heard something i'm saying it no there's there will be this second step of analyzing the word and to analyze the word i cannot function with a carnal mind i need a renewed mind and that is what will help me interpret with accuracy okay so let's uh, stop here let's take a break and we shall come back in 10 minutes um yeah god bless you all thank you